Hi guys, my name's Bill, and on this video I'm going to show you how to troubleshoot a Whirlpool side-by-side -side refrigerator that the freezer is not freezing correctly, but the refrigerator section is still getting cold enough. Okay, so before we begin troubleshooting, a few things have to happen for this refrigerator to get cold enough, especially in the freezer compartment. The compressor has to run long enough, the compressor has to stay cool, it has to be enough Freon in the system, and air has to be able to circulate. So those are the things we're gonna go over, and we're gonna start with the compressor first. Okay, so the compressor on this machine is located in the back, underneath, you know, where, where you can't see it right now. And for that to be running correctly, it needs to be able to stay cool. So there's a fan back there that blows air over the compressor and over the condenser coils that are underneath your machine to dissipate the heat off of those so the evaporator inside the freezer can frost over like it's supposed to. Now the first thing I'm gonna go over is the worst case scenario. And this really isn't gonna be a DIY if you're having this problem, but I'm gonna explain it to you so you have an idea of what it is. That way if you have a service guy come out to your house, you know, at least you know what he's doing and you know everything like that. Chances are you're not gonna have the tools laying around to actually take care of the Freon problem. So the first thing I'm gonna go over is if you don't have enough Freon in the system, the sealed system can't create enough pressure to freeze the whole evaporator. Now that could be from lack of Freon or the Freon has some sort of restriction. And that's also gonna cause there not to be enough pressure created for the evaporator to completely freeze over like it needs to. So if it doesn't do that, it's not gonna have enough cooling capacity to remove enough heat from the freezer to keep it at the proper temperature. I mean, depending on the extent of Freon loss or the restriction, the evaporator could be half froze over or maybe three quarters froze over, and that would be just enough to keep most things frozen, but say your ice cream would start to get soft, or maybe the ice cubes in the top of your tray might get a little watery. The stuff down at the bottom of the freezer would probably stay frozen. So th there's two, two of the main problems you could have that are basically the worst case scenario. Freon restriction or loss of Freon. So the next thing we're gonna go into is keeping the compressor cool. Okay, so before I get into, you know, keeping the compressor cool and stuff like that, let me explain to you how the loss of Freon or a Freon restriction is gonna to relate to, you know, the symptoms that we're having with the freezer not getting cold enough. It takes a lot less cooling capacity to keep the refrigerator at the temperature it needs to be. So if the temperatures are starting to rise to say 10, 20 degrees inside your freezer, well, that air is cold enough as it circulates over to the refrigerator compartment that it's gonna get as cold as it needs to. The only thing in this machine that can detect temperature is the refrigerator cool control. You know, there's no, you know, thermostat or anything like that inside the freezer. So it really doesn't know what temperature it is. It only knows what temperature the refrigerator section is. So if there is some sort of cooled air inside the freezer, the air will circulate over to the refrigerator compartment and keep it cooled enough. Even though there's not enough cooling capacity inside the freezer to bring that temperature down to zero where it needs to be. All right, so let's go over keeping the compressor cool. Now, for the compressor to stay cool, now remember it's running, so there's a motor inside the compressor and it's gonna generate a lot of heat because it's contained inside of a steel bowling ball looking thing. And also the compressor is compressing the Freon. So as the gas is compressed, it's creating heat. You know, it's creating heat outside, so it's taking the heat away from the inside. That's basically how it works. In a nutshell, I'm sure it's more complicated than that, but you know, so we're generating some heat in the condenser coils. Now they're underneath the machine and they're packed tightly together. So there's a fan down there that needs to blow air through the condenser coils and over top of the compressor to get rid of the heat. If that fan stops, then it's gonna overheat very quickly and the compressor's not gonna run long enough. Now this machine is designed to run in a you know 70 degree environment. So based off of that, the machine's gonna run, I'm gonna say roughly 50% of the time when it's in the cooling section and not in defrost. So for you know eight hours a day, the machine's gonna cycle on and off. And basically it's gonna be running 50% of the time, and it's gonna be off 50% of the time. It could be a little different, maybe 45 and 55, I have no idea. But 50-50, we'll call it that. So if the compressor starts generating too much heat, maybe the condenser fan has stopped running or the condenser coils underneath your machine are completely filled up with 
pet hair or lint, dirt, maybe some paper got in there. I've seen cheese papers, I've seen dead animals. I've seen all kinds of stuff inside the condenser coils or stuck inside the fan. So now that the machine's generating too much heat, the compressor is only going to run for say a couple of minutes. It's going to shut off. Even though the fan inside the freezer is still running, it's going to you know move that cool air over into the refrigerator compartment. So it's going to stay cool over there, but the freezer temperatures are going to slowly ri rise over time. So the heat needs to get off of the compressor. So dirty coils or a fan that's not running down by the compressor will cause it to overheat. All right, so one more thing on keeping the compressor cool is the environment. So let's say your refrigerator's in a garage or on a back porch or something like that, and it's the middle of summer. So the you know, temperatures could be 90, 100 degrees. Well, that's too much heat for the compressor and the condenser coils you know, to get rid of. You know, you have a little tiny fan back there that's moving a little bit of air and the machine's designed to be running in say a 70 degree environment. Well, when it starts getting 90 to 100 degrees, that's just too hot and the overloads on the side of the compressor, it'll overheat and shut the compressor off. So during really hot summer days, and if it's for an extended period of time, that's when you're gonna notice that the freezer temperatures have risen, you know, but everything inside the refrigerator is still just as cool as it needs to be. One more thing about the environment is the opposite of that. When I came out here today and plugged this machine in, it didn't come on. My garage was 35 degrees. So I had to run my torpedo heater for a while, just so I'm not freezing in a t-shirt. And eventually the machine came on, now it's running. But let's say it's 40 degrees or 45 degrees where you have the machine running. It, it's, it only has to run for a very short period of time to get the refrigerator section to where it needs to be. So that means the freezer is not gonna cool you know, down to the temperature that it needs to because it don't have to run long enough. And remember, nothing inside this machine, you know, it doesn't know how cold the freezer is. It only knows how cold the refrigerator is. So if the refrigerator is in refrigerator temperature, that's all, that's all the colder it needs to get and it's not gonna cool anymore. Okay guys, I know I've thrown a lot of information at you in this video. I didn't get into any specific troubleshooting the actual compressor or the fan or anything like that. Now I will be, on future videos I do on this machine, but I didn't want to make a 30 minute long video. I kind of wanted to give you an overview of what to look for when you're having this issue as far as the freezer temperatures, not cold enough, but the refrigerator is cold enough. So I hope I've armed you with enough information to at least get you going in the right path as far as troubleshooting. So make sure you subscribe to my YouTube channel. So as I make new videos and stuff on this machine, you know, you get the updates and you can go ahead and watch them and, you know, continue learning because that's what this is all about. Making sure you guys are armed with, you know, enough information. So if you do go to somebody's house to look at their machine, you have an idea. And then as I make specific videos on troubleshooting particular components, you know, that just arms you with more information. So the more information you have, you know, the better off you are. And if I'm wrong on anything that I've explained or if anybody has anything to add, go ahead and feel free to put those in the comments section because you know a lot of people read the comments on the videos and all that does is help you continue to learn. So if you liked the video, give it a thumbs up. If you're not subscribed to my YouTube channel, make sure you do that now. And of course, thanks for watching.